Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to our webinar about robust and reliable tribology testing tools and services. My name is Gregor Patzer, and I'm representing Optimal Instruments as Managing Director. Today, we are talking about frettingware phenomena, which typically cause issues in windmills, electric vehicles, and aircrafts. Modern tribal testing provides ready-to-use solutions to research fretting wear efficiently in lab scale friction and wear testing. The challenges in regards of fretting damages are high frequency vibrations and or movements with short amplitudes. The requirements to lubricant alloys and components are high load carrying capacities and low friction and wear rates. Typically, you find fretting damages in electric vehicle applications like drivetrain and interior systems, wind turbine bearings, and components of aerospace engineering. The main target of tribology research in this application field is to improve the efficiency of subsystems and entire machines, as well as to enhance the endurance and durability of a product. <clears throat> One solution is to work on fretting wear by using a standard method like ASTM D7594, which complies with the SRV tribal test rig. This is a procedure to challenge fretting wear performance in the lab scale with very simple test pieces and very easy test setups. This standard method provides high precision statements um, which are produced in international round robin tests with more than 100 participants <clears throat> over decades. The, state, the precision data um, and the result quality is based on tribal testing knowledge in the fifth generation today at Optimal Instruments. We have more than 60 years experience in tribology testing. As you see, there are many standard methods uh, which refer to our test tricks and which are verified every year in international round-robin tests. As mentioned, the product history is more than 60 years. Uh, the SRV test trick is in its five, fifth generation and provides a lot of technical features and technical performance with proven quality and reliable precision. The ASTM 7494 routine is very simple for the operator. You install the test specimen, which are normally <coughs> uh, standardized discs made of bearing steel with a well-defined surface. You apply a lubricant on the disc, clamp the disc into the tribal tester. Of course, you can produce those discs from any other materials. If you're talking about material research or surface treatments or coatings, <clears throat> you are free to manufacture such discs from your materials you're targeting on. The counterpiece is a ball normally made of bearing steel very, uh, very easy to find on the market uh, at a very low price. But here is the same situation. You can also use other test pieces from other materials. To start the test, it's very simple in the software. Everything is preset and you just need to start the test run automatically. The software controls the tribal tester 
in order to reach the start values for normal force and temperature. And as soon as the starting parameters are reached by the system, the software will start the test automatically after a short delay. This delay uh, is needed to, uh, to get the temperature stable in the test. If you run uh, the test at uh, a special temperature like 50, 80, 100, 120 centigrades, then you need to wait a little time until the temperature is homogeneous over the entire contact. During the test is running, all data is recorded online. You can uh, at any time have a look at the data and get a first feedback of the test results. When the test is finished, You can simply analyze the results in your software by using readout functionalities, <clears throat> by having a look at all the data. You can change the, the uh, data depth, the detail depth. You can export the data to any file formats for further calculations and reporting. And of course, after the test, you should do a post-processing with microscopic imaging of the tribal partners <clears throat> in order to evaluate the wear during the test. When the test is done, you see the uh, main data like the COF or the stroke length, uh, COF represented in red, stroke represented in blue. And this is a very good test where the system performed very well. The stroke is stable and the cough is at an okay value. <clears throat> you, when you observe the wear tracks on the ball and on the disc, you see that the wear tracks are smooth and there are no damages visible on the surfaces. Normally, you should do a 3D measurement of the surfaces to determine the wear scar volumes and the wear depth as you need them for your result reporting. And if you have a bad performing system like you see it here, you see that you have already peaks and spikes in the COF data and in the stroke length, which indicates already that the system is not running smoothly, that there might occur some surface damages. And this you can see in the microscopic images after the test as well, where you observe deep pittings in the surfaces and also the um, yeah, colors like which, which may stand for oxidation or degradation of the <clears throat> tribal partners. Uh, you don't need necessarily to evaluate the wear depth via 3D microscopy. It's also good enough to evaluate with a tip stylus profilometer, <clears throat> which should be available in any laboratory. The results of this test method are so reliable that the industry decided um, to put them into a specification like very actually in the energy I did for his, for his new HPMHL pre-specification where the SRV is represented with two test methods for 
EP properties of lubricating greases and fretting wear resistance of lubricating greases. All those standards are not necessarily to be tested with greases. You can also test them with oils or you can test without any lubricants when you evaluate coating or materials. As you can see here, the industrial coverage of the SRV is very wide in many different, uh, in many different in industry sectors. Uh, when talking about uh, automotive sector, um, aircraft systems, uh, <coughs> pump systems, brake systems, and so on and so on. With this information, I come to the end. I would invite you to contact us either at this ongoing conference at our booth or via mail at optimal-instruments.de or visit our web page or contact us at LinkedIn. We will be happy to discuss further topics, not only about fretting, but also about any other tribology issues which you may have in your everyday life. Thank you and hope to see you soon.